Hello everybody and welcome to Theology 101. Today I will be comparing the views of those who believe that Jesus could sin in his humanity and those who do not. Now I want to remind you that every view that I will be covering in this verses series are legitimate views within Christianity. These are things that brothers and sisters in Christ fight over, but should not be a reason to declare one side heresy. Now the two views that I will be covering today is the impeccability versus the peccability views. The first view called the impeccability view of Christ comes from the Latin phrase that means not able to sin. The second view called the peccability view of Christ comes from the Latin phrase that means able to sin. Now all Christians agree that Jesus did not sin. The debate is whether Jesus could sin in his humanity. And so before we jump into the debate, I want to go over three truths that both sides agree upon. First, Jesus never sinned. If Jesus did sin, then he will be unqualified as the unblemished Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Second, Jesus was tempted. Even though Jesus never sinned, he was tempted just like us. Third, God cannot sin. James, the half-brother of Jesus, says it like this, God cannot tempt anyone with evil or be tempted by evil because he cannot sin. And so with these three truths in mind, let the debate begin. Since Jesus was fully human, it was possible for him to sin. Obviously, Jesus' divine nature could not sin, but if Jesus' divine nature prevented his human nature from sinning, then in what sense did Jesus obey the law as a man? At his birth, Jesus' human nature was the same as Adam's before the fall. Like Adam, Jesus had the ability to sin or not to sin, depending on what he chose. In Adam's case, he chose sin, but in Jesus' case, he chose not to sin. This is why the Apostle Paul says, just as Adam's sin led to the condemnation of all men, so Jesus' obedience made many people righteous. If Jesus could not sin, then this will undermine the significance of his obedience. Also, in what way was Jesus fully man if his humanity is not even capable of sinning? There's a problem with your argument. Jesus was not like Adam in every way. Jesus uniquely has two natures, and these two natures are united without division or confusion within one person. So Jesus was like Adam in that he was born without a corrupted human nature, but he is unlike Adam in that he has a human nature united with a divine nature. Keep in mind that natures do not act, people act. This is important because whatever Jesus did as a man was not simply an expression of his human nature, but were actions as the second person of the Trinity. If it were possible for Jesus to sin, then it would be possible for the second person of the Trinity to sin. What made it impossible for Jesus to sin was not that his divine nature prevented his human nature to sin. It is because Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. And as the Son, in relation to the Father and the Spirit, he speaks, acts, and chooses to obey the Father in all things. How do you explain how Jesus was tempted? Satan did everything in his power to tempt him. That would have been a waste of time if Satan was trying to tempt a divine person to sin. Satan was not trying to get God to sin. He was trying to get the human nature of Christ to sin so that he would not be qualified to be the savior of the world. This implies that Jesus' human nature had the capability to sin if Satan continued to tempt him to sin. If you look at how Satan tempted Jesus, he tempted him differently than the way he would tempt us. Satan tempts us by enticing us with our own sinful desires. But Jesus didn't have a corrupted human nature, so there's nothing within Jesus Satan can use to entice him. Instead, Satan tempted Jesus by pressuring him to exercise his divine attributes instead of submitting to the Father in his humanity. Look at what Satan tempted Jesus with. Jesus was tempted to turn rocks into bread, a temptation that normal people do not face. However, despite Satan's best efforts, Jesus did not yield to the pressure but continued to yield himself to the Father in his human nature. I agree that Satan tempted Jesus differently than the way he tempts us. I also agree that Satan tempted Jesus to exercise his divine attributes. But the issue remains, if Jesus could not sin, then why would Jesus need to resist Satan's temptation? The fact that Satan tempts Jesus to exercise his divine attributes implies that Jesus chose not to exercise his divine attributes. If this is so, then Jesus did not depend on his divine nature to resist temptation, but he resisted temptation in his human nature. In fact, Luke makes it clear that the Holy Spirit is the one who empowered Jesus to resist Satan's temptation. Why would Jesus need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to resist temptation if his human nature could not sin? Wouldn't this indicate that Jesus' human nature could sin? 
which is why the Holy Spirit was necessary to empower him. I believe that Jesus did not sin because he was uniquely empowered by the Holy Spirit. To say that Christ's divine nature made it impossible for his human nature to sin undermines Jesus' obedience as a man and the role of the Holy Spirit. My view protects the authenticity of Jesus' human nature because it was his human nature that carried out the mission of redemption for mankind, and it was his human nature that was uniquely anointed by the Holy Spirit. You falsely assume that temptation is genuine only if the person tempted is susceptible to sin. However, a person can be genuinely tempted even if that person does not yield to that temptation. It is possible for a rowboat to attack a battleship even though it is impossible for the rowboat to conquer the battleship. But just because the battleship cannot lose to the rowboat does not mean that the rowboat did not genuinely attack the battleship. Or take two people who are given the same temptation. Let's say you offer them a cocktail drink. One person is a struggling alcoholic while the other person never has a desire to drink. Just because one person can easily resist the temptation, while the other cannot, does not mean the temptation is not real. The temptation might be the same for both people, but the ones tempted would have different ability to resist that temptation. So although Jesus could not sin, this does not mean that he was not genuinely tempted. Jesus could not sin, then how can you say that he was fully human? According to your view, Jesus' humanity was different than our humanity if Jesus' humanity did not have the capability to sin. Also, if Jesus could not sin, then Jesus was not free to choose to obey the Father, and that undermines his freedom as a man. The picture of an ideal person in the Bible is a person without sin. Adam was created without sin, and all Christians will live without the ability to sin in a resurrected body on the new heavens and the new earth. Like Jesus, we will be unable to sin. This doesn't make us any less human. If anything, we will be more human than we were ever before because this is how God intended every human to live from the very beginning. Also, it is not true that Jesus' freedom was limited because he could not sin. If anything, this allowed him to be freer than any one of us because sin enslaves people. But when we are in the new heavens and the new earth, we will not be able to sin. This does not mean our freedom is limited. If anything, we will be freer than ever before because we will get to finally live exactly how Jesus lived, completely without sin. So what'd you guys think? Which view did you find more convincing? If you found this video helpful, please like it and share it with a friend, and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you will know when the next Versus video comes out. Until next time, see you!